Paris, sprawling capital of culture and a key city in Europe's political and scientific development. This week, it's home to the world's leading transplantation professionals as they come together for the 49th annual meeting of the EBMT. Things are well underway at the Palais de Congrès de Paris as delegates gather for their first in-person annual meeting since 2019 to share research, network with peers and discuss the latest in HSCT and cellular therapy. We'll take you around the world to hospitals, institutes and companies doing extraordinary work in the field. And you can catch it right here on EBMT TV. We're back for day two of the 49th annual meeting of the EBMT and the second of our four daily episodes. Today marks the beginning of some exciting sessions, including nurses session, the practice harmonization day, and of course, the Presidential Symposium. So let's get started. Today on EBMT TV, coming up, we'll hear about key topics from this year's Patient, Family and Donor Day. We sit down for an interview focusing on nursing and new cell therapies. Stand by for visits to the University Hospital of Bern in Switzerland, First Affiliated Hospital of Suzhou University in China, and the global biopharmaceutical company Takeda. Finally, we'll recap the top highlights from Sunday at the EBMT. The EBMT TV highlights, extended interviews and film series are available wherever you're ready to watch, including on screen throughout the venue, online via the annual meeting virtual platform, via the EBMT 2023 meeting app, and on YouTube and Twitter. Watch daily for more great content and coverage. First though, let's welcome EBMT Trainee Committee Co-Chair Claire Horgan and Scientific Co-Chair Ali Bazabahi to tell us more about what's happening this Monday at the 49th Annual Meeting of the EBMT. I'm Claire Hogan, EBMT Trainee Committee Co-Chair. Hello, I'm Ali Bazarvesi, Scientific Committee Co-Chair of this year's annual meeting. Welcome to day two of the 49th annual meeting of the EBMT. Today we have a really busy programme, a highlight of which will be the first ever in-person trainee day brought to you live here from Paris. Equality, diversity and inclusion has been an increasingly important topic for discussion in the last years. Don't miss our EDI special session this morning at 9 a.m. Also, today is the Cell Therapy Day, Sci Day, Data Management Sessions, Lab Technicians Day, EBMT WMDA Transplant and Search Coordinators Day, and Practice Harmonization Day. Join the Practice Harmonization Day and the Transplant and Search Coordinators Day on site here in Paris via the live stream and find two extra sessions on our on demand library. So today, at 4.30 p.m., we will enjoy the Presidential Symposium with the presentation of the winner of the prestigious Van Beckham Award, Dr. Chen, for the phase three study on vedolizumab for prophylaxis of lower gastrointestinal acute GVHD after allogeneic transplantation from unrelated donors. Then, the presentation of the Basic Science Award winner, Dr. Orberg, for his study about bacteriophage modulated production of intestinal interferon 1 inducing metabolites is associated with protect protection in allogeneic stem cell transplantation patients. During the presidential symposium, you will also hear the six presidential abstract presentations. Attend these three important joint sessions. We hope you have a great Monday and enjoy the annual meeting. Make sure not to miss out on those important abstract presentations from the Presidential Symposium. Now, in our first of our visits to organisations around the world, let's go to the Department of Haematology and Central Haematology Laboratory at the University Hospital of Bern. 
With over 100 employees, the University Clinic is one of the largest specialised institutions in Switzerland, offering complete and comprehensive diagnostics and treatment across the entire field of haematology. Haematology exists at the Inselspital in Bern, Switzerland, since 1965. As a university reference center for haematology, we are active in the entire field of haematology, namely general haematology, hemato-oncology, hemostasis and thrombosis, transfusion medicine, uh, stem cell transplantation and cell therapy. Our clinic is a university clinic, meaning that research and education are part of our duties along with patient cares. We train young hematologists to be the medical experts in the field in the near future, ensuring continuity in high standard of care. We want to offer more rapid and more accurate diagnosis to deliver prognosis indicators and to manage our patients with the most cutting-edge treatments as possible. The Patient, Family and Donor Day is an essential part of every annual meeting of the EBMT. It aims to explore both scientific trends and the special relationship created between clinical BMT personnel and patients and their families. Patient Advocacy Committee Chair Natasha Balamas and multiple sclerosis patient Noelle Tassi share valuable insights on the key issues like GVHD, psychological consequences of HSCT and much more. The pandemic was quite difficult for the patients, not only because of the impact that it had in the way care is delivered. The digitalization, the virtual setting suddenly covered a lot of importance and that caused a lot of impact on the patients also because it came to exacerbate the isolation, levels of anxiety, depression, stress. But at the same time, we got some learnings from that experience that we are trying now to incorporate into the, into the patient journey and into the way the, the care is presented to the patient. The Patient Family and Donor Day that takes place uh, during the EBMT annual meeting is about connecting the patients, the carers, the family members and the donors with their medical teams, with the healthcare professionals, everyone that is involved in the bone marrow transplantation and in the cell therapy field. It's about building a community. The most important piece is the information that it brings to patients, translating research into what really matters for the patients, but it's also about discussing patient outcomes. And we are now more connected with more patients, more diseases to represent not only the blood cancers, but the autoimmune diseases. We have a very good patient expert, Noel Tassi, living with multiple sclerosis. And this is changing completely the way we can interact with the EBMT working parties. This year, EBMT Patient Advocacy Committee and the Patient uh, Family and Donor Day welcome for the first time autoimmune diseases and more specifically multiple sclerosis. This gives people with multiple sclerosis the opportunity to voice their concerns and experiences in regarding um, autologous bone marrow transplants and their interest in existing future cell therapies. This kind of therapy is standard uh, for the treatment of cancer, hematologic malignancies, but it is innovative and promising for autoimmune diseases. I had MS for more than 30 years and I had two auto transplants. The first in France, in my country, and after we left, I had to go to Russia to get the second one. Patient with MS needing to go abroad and to pay for HSCT is a growing social phenomenon in many countries. This event is a remarkable and concrete manifestation of health democracy. It creates positive conditions for people with MS to advocate for the improvement of access to HSCT of course, with the hope to be heard by the scientific community, even beyond EBMT. One thing remains true, and it's the power of coming together. So we are trying to connect with the different areas and also partnering with the different working parties at EBMT to ensure that they can incorporate what is valued by the patients. The 
BBMT Patient Family and Donor Day will certainly continue to play an integral role in enriching and supporting the BMT community. Stay tuned for an interview on new strategies in cellular therapy coming right up. Now to China. The Department of Hematology at the first affiliated hospital of Suzhou University, led by Dr. Di Pai Wu, houses one of China's most important centers in HSCT. We are honored to be recognized as the National Clinical Research Center for Hematological Disease, which is certified by our national government, representing the top three clinical centers of hematology in China. We have 616 beds in total, perform more than 1,000 transplants each year, and in addition, hundreds of cases with cellular therapies such as CAR-T. As the president of Chinese Society of Hematology, we are dedicated to conduct innovative clinical studies for creating novel drugs and products to finally improve the prognosis of patients with hematological diseases. We have extensive cooperation with many international organizations, including EBMT, Joining us now in the studio is Ruth Clout, nurse representative from the EBMT Cellular Therapy and Immunology Working Party, to talk to us about new cellular therapies and the impact on nursing practice. Ruth, thanks for joining us. Thank you for having me. So what's changed in cell therapy over the last few years? Well, really, there has been a significant shift in cellular therapy, and that's since the licensing of the CAR-T products in 2018. So we saw that initially for acute lymphoblastic leukemia and lymphoma, and now in 2021 and 2022, it's mantle cell and also myeloma. So this is a really positive shift for cellular therapy treatments. And what effect has that had on the nurse's role? It has affected the nurse's role. For the clinical nurse specialists and transplant team, it's obviously increased their workload and the amount that they need to do for these patients. But it has also opened up other opportunities for clinical nurse specialists in the CAR-T role. For ward-based nurses, we're looking at different toxicities, so the managing of those as inpatients. So, for example, cytokine release syndrome and neurological toxicities require different, different assessments from the nursing team. With all this to all these new roles and with all this to learn, how easy is it for nurses to get the, the relevant training and how's the EBMT filling those gaps? So um, your training is obviously a massive um, requirement for this, you know, for cellular therapy and it's really important that nurses do have that training. EBMT is an excellent, excellent resource in providing that for nurses. We obviously have the annual conference, so there's also the CAR-T meeting, but allowing um, those events to be hybrid make them more accessible for nurses. There's a whole multitude of um, um, textbooks via EBMT, online resources, webinars. So I think EBMT are doing a really good job at meeting the needs of those nurses and their training requirements. What do you think the future of transplantation is and, and what do nurses do need to do to be ready for that? Um, so transplantation and cellular therapy is constantly evolving, but focusing more on the cellular therapy side of things, there hopefully will be more products available for different disease groups. Nurses need to continue to access um, available training resources to, to, to learn about different um, variances of treatments. And really, I think um, how we support patients in their patient pathway and utilising different methods of admission. So, for example, ambulatory care might be a good way that we can actually support patients through the transplantation and cellular therapy um, pathway. Well, thank you. Thank you very much for joining You're us. Welcome. It's been a pleasure. Thank you. Thank you. Next we visit Takeda, a patient-focused global biopharmaceutical company. Takeda continues to seek new possibilities in transplantation, including potential treatment options to help address the unmet medical needs of transplant recipients with cytomegalovirus infection. Imagine that you received the gift of a transplant and a new lease on life, only to learn that your recovery is compromised 
by a virus you've never heard of before. Many transplant patients are highly immunosuppressed and experience post-transplant infectious complications that can be serious or even fatal, but our options to address these have been limited. Cytomegalovirus CMV infection may lead to increased incidence of CMV endogen disease, morbidity, and mortality, all of which can be devastating for transplant recipients and their families. The treatment goal is not only to clear and maintain the clearance of the CMV infection, but to do so while minimizing treatment-limiting toxicities, hopefully improving their prognosis. Commonly used anti-CMV treatments primarily target CMV DNA polymerase and may have efficacy and tolerability limitations for some patients, including the development of resistance, creating a need for alternative agents to combat the CMV infection continuum. Takeda celebrates our partnership with the medical community to deliver an innovative anti-CMV treatment targeting CMV UL97 protein kinase, which is implicated in processes critical to CMV replication, such as viral DNA synthesis, viral gene expression, encapsidation, and nuclear egress of newly formed viral capsids. This represents a significant recent progress. To the transplant community, we thank you for your perseverance and partnership over the years. And we look forward to working together to improve patient outcomes. As delegates from around the world move into this very exhibit hall here in Palais de Congress de Paris, let's find out what healthcare professionals say about the 49th annual meeting of the EBMT. EBMT is the most popular uh, bone marrow transplantation congress in the world. That's why we are so excited and it's great to be in Paris. EBMT to me is a great way to meet uh, professionals within uh, bone marrow transplant. At events like this, uh, you know, you meet people from all different countries, so yeah, it's really nice to be here and uh, to uh, enjoy some time with, um, yeah, with the colleagues. We're here for the sessions uh, to know what's the update about hematology. Uh, EBNT for us, uh, for me, is uh, the occasion to meet uh, again after the pandemic uh, time. Uh, connection uh, with uh, others, uh, with customers, uh, with doctors. I come to know every new thing that's happening in this field every year. And this is first time I'm uh, coming to EVMT, so that's made more special for me. Great to hear from those who made it to Paris. Now, before we wrap up today's episode, let's take a look back at some key moments from Sunday at the 49th annual meeting of the EBMT. Building the patient family and donor day is about building a community between the healthcare professionals. everyone and thank you all for joining us on the day. It's really my great pleasure as president of the EBMT to welcome all of you to this 49. Well, that brings us to the end of our second show here in Paris. Join us tomorrow for more. We'll be hearing from this year's Van Beckham Award winner, as well as see all the highlights from today, including the Presidential Symposium, Cell Therapy Day, and many more. See you tomorrow.